Hey everybody, it's Eddie J on Crypto, and here's where we get into the topics that I announced during our Crypto Minute. First, I want to address something. Um, a close follower of ours um, informed me yesterday that there might be uh, bogus accounts using my name, um, telling you to go to different websites and things like that. I will not tell you to go to another website. If I don't own the company, I'm not going to tell you to go to that website and give them business. If I'm giving you research that I found on a company, that's different than me saying, hey, I want you to go do something, or I would like you to look at one of my companies. Totally different. Okay? So starting off, I'll give you an example. Ripple and Fast Payments Council released a report saying that they expect 50% of merchants to actually be accepting of crypto over the next three years now that bodes well for one of my companies rebel reach we have to have that hosting company integrated with native crypto meaning you pay us a flat fee for web hosting and you get to do credit card payments paypal payments as well as crypto payments all direct through your through your accounts so point to point and you pay a flat fee that's what I would say. I'm not going to send you to a website to shill some sort of, you know, uh, financial information. Well, not financial information, but, you know, financial management where you have to pay them fees for something like that. I'm not a financial advisor. That's not what I do. I'm sharing research, right? I'm not going to shill for one of those kinds of companies because I don't believe in those companies. I believe in doing your own research. That should be your first hint. I believe in doing your own research. So I'm not going to go out there and tell you about some company that I know nothing about. If you think that somebody's telling you about a company and you don't think that it's me or you thought it was me, drop me a note. Drop me a note because it's real easy to know what companies I own. Right. It's it's all over my profiles and everything like else like that. I own Rebel Reach, which is a web hosting firm. I own Rebel Visions, which is a consulting firm. I own BC and Sports, helping kids to go from high school to college with their athleticism, basically college recruiting. And we own Gig Blast and we have a new product coming out called Grow My Bag, which will be launching very soon. Very happy about that. And our biggest project to date is Rebel Vino, which is a social media platform dedicated to food and beverage. And we also have that streaming on or our show is streaming on Roku and Fire TV. Those are my companies. So if you hear anything about, you know, you know, financing and all that stuff. Nope. Mm -mm. Do your own research. That's where we're at. Anyway, let's get back to the news. Wall Street Journal dropped a bombshell report on Friday talking about how Tether and Bitfinex might have used fraudulent documents to create bank accounts for the parent company. Now, they took it a step further and alleging that it's highly possible that Tether, Tether and Bitfinex might have facilitated terror financing. None of that is good, but I'm expecting that news to hit hard Excuse me, but I'm also expecting it to dissipate quickly because the big players are not using Tether. None of the people that I know are using Tether. If they need to swap between different places to get their pairings, you know, the, the pairs between coins correct, they, they're bouncing to other stable coins, especially Circle or USDC. That's what I'm seeing. So using Tether, mm, I think that impact might be diminished. Right. And it wouldn't shock anybody, given the past of the head of Tether for, you know, a while ago. So something to think about now when it comes to the overall market, I'm looking at uh, David Duong from Coinbase because he agrees with me. We're in a weird season right now. You've got different industries like the financial industry paying out bonuses in the United States right now. You've got tax season, people trying to pay their taxes right now. So it's it just creates a weird environment. Couple that with inflation and you've just got not a great time for anything to point to in any specific direction. So lateral movement with ups and downs is what I'm expecting. And we both agree on that. So Pay attention, do your own research, look around to see what's going on, and you might be able to get in on playing some of these downs so that you can take advantage of the ups. Next one up, Bybit. So nobody's saying it, 
But Bybit is actually stopping their payments. This isn't the part that they didn't that they said um, that they did say, but the part that they didn't say. They're stopping their payments on March 10th. USD transfers, rather. So if they're stopping their transfers on March 10th, right? It's got to be involved with Silvergate. Got to be. Which begs the question: What are the thoughts from BlackRock and Citadel? both having dropped big money to be involved in Silvergate. So Silvergate is pulling back from crypto. Then you have BCG, BCB Group getting involved saying, look, we're, gonna, we're a bank and we're going to have the rails in place by early Q2 of 2023. If that becomes true, here's a player that's looking to fill the gap left by Silvergate. That's not all. You want to know who? wants to start a bank kraken now look at the timing kraken just paid 30 million dollars to the sec for a settlement right get out of that whole DeFi problem whatever whatever cool cool beans not a problem everything was going to be kept quiet they were supposed to launch the bank last year but i think that's when they got wind of everything that was going on with the sec and didn't want any of that dirt on the bank so they said okay let's pause took care of that, handled it, and now they come out with, we're about to launch our own bank. That would be one of the smartest moves ever. The reason why is because it solves a problem for them. Silvergate vacates the space. You need a bank to handle USD transfers. Start your own bank. Mind you, there are three major US agencies that oversee the financial industry. The FDIC, the OCC, and I forgot the last one, the Fed. So when you look at that, you sit back and you kind of go, damn. Yes, that's right. There's a lot to unpack. There's a lot of hoops to jump through if you're going to start your own bank. Mind you, Kraken being a centralized crypto exchange is going to have to jump through a lot of hoops and they will be under scrutiny from day one. Do I think they'll be successful? Yeah, I do. That's, and, the, and that's the reason why, because there are so many damn hoops to jump through. I'm just looking at it like that straight up. Anyway, what we should do is actually get to the numbers. And the reason why I want to get to the numbers so quickly is because they are basically flat, meaning they're just moving laterally. Let me just go over here and refresh the screen. There you go. So when you look at these numbers, you sit there and you kind of go, yeah, they are flat. Look at this. These are the 5% movers and higher. Those are the 5% movers and higher, right? A star is down 5%. Um, who else I'm paying attention to? Flexcoin is down 5%. Quant is down 6%. That's pretty much all. Singularity.net, I mean, Singularity.net, well, I think it's .net, um, is negative 7%. Um, that's it. Then on this side, who do you have that's, that's up beyond that? Nobody. Nobody I'm paying attention to is up. That's moving flat or a little to the downside. When the tether news hits later today, I'm expecting that, like I said, to kind of hit hard. But there had already been a push in place to get people to move away from tether and toward circle. Or at least BUSD, right? But now you have that whole problem with BUSD, the Paxos, and Bitcoin and Binance. So that's not going to happen. So people really are leveraging USD. I mean USDC, which is Circle. Then you look at Bin you look at Bitcoin, and you say to yourself, "We did drop below that twenty three four seventeen, and I told you if we can't stay above that, we're not going to go higher. And if we can't stay above that, we will go below." So I'm expecting another drop. I really am expecting another drop. You can tell that we're basically moving in a flat line for, for a little bit now. But I'm expecting another drop because of Tether and because everything else that's going on. Don't forget, we also have uh, Powell speaking Tuesday and Wednesday. And then in two weeks from now, you get more CPI data. And yeah, what's going on with inflation? They haven't been able to, you know, to reel that in. So there's a lot going on there. The big picture, eh, it's going to take too long. But if you look side by side, you can see everybody's in the red. Everybody's deep in the red. 
deep, 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 deep in the red. So that's what I'm paying attention to. Anyway, Zeddy Jaron Crypto. I hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.